If Apple gaps down on the earnings next week and fail, if, so first of all, if Apple gaps down on the earnings, depending on where it gaps down, which I don't know, high odds is a short. High odds it'll rate well. I mean, I have to really see where it is. It will bring the whole market down. But, now just listen to me, the market's rallied so much that low odds, even though it's going to pull the market down, that we would break this area. However, which is an area now everyone in the world is worked up about that thinks it's going to hold because we've rallied so big since there. We've really rallied a lot from there in a short time. <coughs> but say we break that. Say Gap Apple really just completely bombs itself. And then we fall on the day. And then we continue falling for like a week or so or whatever. And then we fall. And say we break it. We're still holding the uptrend. But we have rallied a lot that if Apple bombs and falls and the market will go fall with it, that low odds we break this. But even if we do, we're still holding the uptrend. But anyways, it depends how many days we fall. Because there's a lot of other earnings that are happening too right after that that could affect the market. In fact, I'll look up the dates for Amazon and stuff like that too. <laughs> but the market's had enough of a rally that low odds we break that. But even if we do, we're still holding as of now. Remember, these numbers aren't static. Like if I told you, do boo boo, you know, the number may be different tomorrow. And by the number in anything, whether it's the market, whether it's Apple, whether it's whatever, because things are moving, they're alive. <coughs> okay, let's look at what Amazon is. That's why you have to know what to do. I mean, that's quite frankly, that's why you have to know what to do. Because if I if I tell you, do, 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 if you don't talk to me every day, you don't know, because that do, do, do could change. So if you know what to do yourself, well, then you can figure it out yourself and you don't have to talk to anyone else or follow anyone else or know anything. But if you know how to do it yourself, then you're set. You're set for life, which is pretty much where I'm at with my life right now. January 31st is Amazon. <coughs> okay, none of these did anything good last year at the end of the last year. So if they all spontaneously combust this year it will be crazy but i guess they could google is not the same day as amazon which is unusual wow that's weird <coughs> all right <coughs> i'm lucky well, you could be lucky too. You did the class, you pay attention, you follow, you're listening. You could be lucky too. I don't know if it's luck. It's took me a long time to get here. That was a good lecture? Oh, good. I think all my lectures are good, but anyways, let's just say the second scenario. Say Apple gaps up. It's It has to be something monster-like for me to want to go long it or call any options or anything. But as far as the market goes, it's really going to help the market a lot. So there's scenario two. So in other words, Apple, a, a baby gap in Apple, I wouldn't go crazy about going long, but it will help the market because the market's already looking good. So any, like if the Apple had earnings tonight and gapped up, the SPY would be at 274. I can tell you that right now. Even if this was, even if this gapped up only to like 160, the SPY would be at 274. But this at 160, I wouldn't go long. Does that make sense? So it's hard to, <coughs> it's hard to, it's hard to, this is not an easy read. I'll tell you that. Just like the market wasn't an easy read in December when it kept falling every single solitary day. And I kept saying, nope, we're still bullish. And no one believed me in the planet. But I was right. But anyways, this isn't an easy read either because a lot of, because you say, well, wait a minute, how can you say that this is still in the uptrend, but you're telling me not to go long it? Well, because that's the reality. So sometimes if you're in a long position, you may hold, you don't sell it and you don't go long it anymore, but it doesn't mean you, you enter it. 
So do you know what I'm saying? Like just because something's in an uptrend, it doesn't mean to go long it. This isn't a good place to go long here <coughs> because it's right on the cusp. It's hanging on for dear life. It may actually survive itself and save itself or it may kill itself. So I don't know. But what I'm saying is that there's sometimes there's nothing to do. If you're long Apple and you own Apple, which I know some people do that have taken my class. Uh, Jen does. I don't see her here in the room. She's on Apple since like, I don't know, 1995 or something crazy. I don't know, whenever it was born. She owns it forever. So, I mean, there's just, she's not getting out. But I mean, like if you bought Apple as a swing trade or if you are in it for a period, I mean, if you bought it late in the year last year, I mean, you're down or you're already out. If you bought it in 2016, you might be in, but you're, I mean, you've given back a lot of profits. <laughs> because if you bought it around 100 in 2016, early in the year, and it ran up to 233, and you more than doubled your profit, you've given more than 50% of that back. So you're still up, but... You know, the only way you'd still be in it and holding is if you really are going to be in it for another 5 to 10 to 20 years or longer. So there's nothing to do with Apple here, but it might be a short next week. It's a better short than long right now, unless it does something crazy up, which this stock can do, but I don't think it's going to. So if it does anything big, it's going to be down. But if it does anything up, it's going to move the market up big. Does that make sense? <coughs> Market just isn't falling, so market's just not falling. All right, what are we doing? I think we're done for the day. So this we didn't do, and it went. And I'm glad we did this because I almost wasn't going to do anything at all then. So do you have any other questions? If not, I'm going to let everybody go. We'll see what we get tomorrow. I have no idea. I'm not going to worry about it. I have some work to do today, and I'm still taking all my vitamins and trying to get better and I just wish that I would get better. The class is this weekend and unfortunately for those of you that are redoing it, I'm just going to sound like I sound. There's the chances of my nose clearing up in 48 hours is probably slim to none. I don't feel sick but I can't breathe right and so I apologize for that but I already moved the class back once, we can't move it again. Because sometimes I've noticed that, you, first of all, I notice that you watch the stock every day. I know that you like it, Michael. And I know that whenever I call a trade in it, you do it. And I also know that sometimes you've done it when I haven't called trades in it, when it hasn't done anything at all to do. And I remember the one day you said you traded it in the car doing something. I have a feeling, like that's, I mean, I'm not criticizing you. I'm just saying I know some people like to watch certain stocks every day and they like to trade them every day. I wouldn't do that and I don't do that. But I've noticed that you, this is a stock that you like. And my guess is that you've made money in it, so you like to watch it. But there's nothing to necessarily do in a stock every day, which is why we don't watch the same stock every day. Like today, there isn't any trade in Apple. Yesterday, there wasn't any trade in Apple. The last day there was a trade in Apple was December 3rd, or January 3rd here. Sorry. <coughs> and unfortunately, it just didn't go big enough. So there hasn't been a trade in this for three weeks, and you've traded it in between there. So I, that's why I'm saying that. I just, you know... That's not my system, but I've noticed that, and you're not the only person. Some people like to watch certain things and they like to trade them, and they just do. I've been, I've been, I'm overdosing on vitamin D, which you're not allowed to do. My, my vitamin D is so low that I'm, I'm taking it. I'm taking it every day. I'm taking more than you're even allowed, but my, it's so low because I got the test that I'm allowed to take more, even though that's something you can't, you shouldn't overdose on, but my, my D is low, but I'm taking it. I'm taking everything. There's nothing that I'm not taking. Literally. <coughs> Over the counter, under the counter. Homeopathic. Uh, Carl made money today. That's good. <coughs> I went to the doctor whenever that was, whenever I closed the room. And I took three things the doctor gave me, but those were done in five days. So I, this, the doctor stuff made me like 20% better. Like, it didn't even make me 50% better. I don't even know if it was worth taking to wreak the havoc it wreaks in your body. So, it's just like, you know, I, I just don't know. 
And honestly, it feels like an allergy because of the way that the, my nose is like was having trouble breathing. It feels more like an allergy than a flu thing, but I don't know what I'm allergic to because it's cold out. It's not like it's allergy season. I don't know. I'm on probiotics. I'm, I'm on everything. Like I just, my whole counter is just like a, it's like a, it's like a store of vitamins. I just get up and I just take everything. It's just ridiculous. <coughs> I don't know what that is, Stephen. Sounds like a drug. Once you have a cold, it's too late. It has to run its course. All right, well, that isn't good news. <laughs> CVS? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, listen, have a good day, everyone. Sorry I'm sick. You'll have to put up with it this weekend. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye.